I didn't want to be there. You know, I thought any place is better than here. I even thought being dead was better than here because at least being dead, then I was nothing. But here I was being treated like I was nothing, even though I was something, even though I was someone. Um, I was I was scared. I really didn't know what, what was happening. All I knew was I, I got grabbed by this bigger person and he started hitting me and asking me to suck on his penis. If if my stepfather hit me today, I would go haywire on him and uh, I would probably get into a lot of trouble because I would probably hurt him pretty badly because of what he did to me before. He would turn around and say, if you're not going to do it, I'll get your sister to do it. And he, she's so close to me. Like, I told him, I said, hurt me because I'm used to it. And I didn't want her to feel the same stuff I was feeling or had to do. We've all got real problems, but can't always solve them. We need someone to listen, because we all need some talking. Some try to ignore, but we've got to explore. We cannot hide it all away. Let's do this together. Love, well, I'll talk to you, and you'll talk to me. We've got to reach out to set us for free. To grasp me, talks. According to the United Nations, every child has the right to love, care, and affection. But it is surprising how many of us are not protected by this right. Physical, emotional, and sexual abuse happens to many young people. I'm Rebecca Haynes. In the Degrassi series, my character Kathleen suffered physical and emotional abuse from her boyfriend. Since school's been out, we've traveled across Canada to talk to teenagers. Some of the stories we're about to share with you are very disturbing. But if we don't open our eyes to the truth, how are we going to stop further abuse? You want to do an, uh, an intro? Yeah, sure. And... Oh, just <laughs> rolling. Hi, this is Stacy Mustician for Degrassi Talks. When is it okay to hit a kid? I don't think it is okay at all. You don't hit kids because they're so small and fragile. Except if it's my brother, you can hit him. I think that it's time to spank a child when it is misbehaving. And that is not child abuse to me. In the Toronto West Detention Center, we spoke with Matt about his early relationship with his stepfather. He had me in my bedroom. And, uh... He had my pants down, had me over his knee, and uh, just laid a, an extremely brutal whipping on me. My behind was red and blue. I mean, uh, it's, it was, the veins were just sticking out. It was, uh, I don't even know how to describe it any better than that. It hurt. <laughs> Punk. Come back to me again. I can't. No, Dad. No. Dad, no. Physical abuse has always been used in in my house. Uh, I don't know if you'd want to call it abuse, but uh, physical punishment always. I, uh, I just thought that's how most people were. Well, when I was 16, I was with this guy and I got pregnant. And I had a miscarriage about three and a half months into it. And um, after that, he started to beat me up. Um, he would slap me around when he was drunk. He burnt me once with a cigarette on my chest. And um, he cracked my ribs and black eyes and bloody noses and stuff like that. Even my very first boyfriend from my very first one, to my last one have always hit me and I guess I was just it was just a part of growing up it was just the thing to do there's a lot of that going around in the Yukon that it's just socially acceptable to hit I've known people who have gone out with someone and their their partner their boyfriend their well boyfriend always like hits him around and then 
And the weird thing is that a lot of times they stay or go back to the same person. Mr. Walters said my audition was good. Are you kidding me? He said I should keep auditioning. And, and I say I... you stunk. You're pathetic. You're lucky I go out with you. Nobody else would want you. Scott, please. No, no. when I say so. You're useless. You're garbage. <laughs> What is emotional abuse? I think emotional abuse is when someone plays with your feelings. It's mostly negative and you never get anything positive. And it's just, it can really hurt. Well, that's when, I guess you, you'd say, your parents would tell you stuff like, oh, you're no good, you're not, you know, you're never gonna be anything, stuff like that. Laquita lives in Kamloops, BC. She suffered years of emotional abuse from her parents. I was born with cerebral palsy, and it affects mainly my, the lower part of my body, my legs and my feet. My parents uh, were really, I don't know, they, they wanted to shut me away. They wanted to make like, they didn't like me being out in public. They were embarrassed by it, you know, and they didn't want to acknowledge that I existed. So they tried to hide me away from it. And they tried to make like, not only did I not have a disability, but that I, I wasn't a part of their, their family. And, and that was hard. Uh, actually, it hurt, if anything, because I didn't understand what was going on. I wasn't allowed out of, out of my room at one point for, I guess, eight months. I don't, I'm not sure, like time, when, when you're stuck in a place, time just drags and, and mm. you don't bother to keep count of it. Uh, so I stay, I lived in my room for quite a long time, and uh, I wasn't allowed out. I wasn't even, they wouldn't even let me go to school. So how did your parents' treatment if you make you feel about yourself? Well, low, if anything. I mean, mm -hmm. sometimes I wondered why I was even in existence. You know, obviously they didn't want me, and I didn't want to be there. You know, I thought any place is better than here. I even thought being dead was better than here because at least being dead then I was nothing but here I was being treated like I was nothing even though I was something I think emotional abuse can do just as much to you as physical abuse can because like physical abuse emotional abuse can scar you for life my self-esteem was so low that I just didn't care anymore I just, I didn't care if he hit me anymore. It was, to me, it was easier to take a punch than it was to be called down or, or to be made fun of or something. I'd rather be hit than, than have inside scars. The physical scars are abuse, of abuse are, are nothing compared to the long-lasting effects of it. I mean, uh, if, if my stepfather hit me today, I would go haywire on him. And uh, I would probably get into a lot of trouble because I would probably hurt him pretty badly because of what he did to me before. Matt's unresolved anger led him to drugs, a habit he could only afford by stealing. Matt got caught. I, I started using drugs to escape the problems I had, to if you keep escaping your problems, then they just get worse and worse and worse. What is sexual abuse? It's when somebody does something to another person that he doesn't want when he touches uh, personal parts. And it's totally wrong and it really hurts people. Why don't we start by you telling me about your boyfriend that you were going out with? Uh, well, I was at home. I was, uh, just relaxing, and he called me up and said he wanted to come over, so I, uh, said okay. And about 15 minutes later, he arrived, and he came over. And we were sitting down watching TV, and, uh, he started, you know, kissing, you know, foreplay, gentle thing. And then he started moving a little too fast, and... I said, 
No. And he backed off for a little while, but then he started up again, and he really started forcing himself on me, and I said no. When is it okay to force sex on someone? Or is it okay? <laughs> no, it's not okay. If the person doesn't want to do it, then nobody should force them to. Anytime you've been forced to have sex when you don't want to, it's rape no matter what. Like, you could have had sex two billion times, but it doesn't matter. It's like anytime you don't want to do it and he forces it on you, it's rape. He forced me down there and I said, no, I don't want this. And he said, yes. And I told him I wasn't ready yet. And he opened my legs and pulled down my pants. Then he undid his pants and I said no and he put himself